Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Ask Dr. Nick. My name is Dr. Nick Schmilkoffer and I work for the Neurologic Wellness Institute. And today's question is, how does exercise affect the gut microbiome? And this question is important because there's a lot of evidence showing that the gut microbiome is the basis for our health. Not only the health of our bodies, the health of our guts, but also the health of our brain, as there is a in tight or intact gut-brain access that's modulated through multiple factors, including the vagus nerve that runs from the lower brainstem all the way down into the gut and most of the colon. Um, but then there's other, obviously, factors that the gut can affect the brain through um, through non-neurological, like the vagus nerve, but through the blood. And so the gut microbiome, we have about 90% of our cells are the microbiome, or our bacterial cells on and in our body. Um, the rest are actually human cells or eukaryotic cells, basically cells that make us us. But those 90% that are bacteria, most of them reside in the gut and they help to not only produce neurotransmitters that can affect the brain, help produce uh, short chain fatty acids or small molecules that help our colon grow, but they also help us with immune defense. Um, so that what we eat, we can help prevent you know, food poisoning or help prevent um, other microbes that might be on our food from entering our, our, uh, our bodies. And so what we're gonna do is we're going to talk about an article about how exercise affects our gut, okay? And because there is some controversy on it, um, we do know that intense exercise uh, or even like exercise like running a marathon does produce a leaky gut or increases the um, intestinal permeability. Basically, um, our gut is this big long donut and so the outside or inside our gut is actually outside of our body and so when intestinal permeability happens, we can have absorption into our bloodstream of bugs or microbes that we don't want, but we can also have absorption of toxins that might be kind of sitting in our gut that are supposed to be getting uh, eliminated uh, in our feces. And so what I want to do again is talk about how, how the gut interacts or how the gut is affected and the gut microbiome is affected by exercise. Uh, so let's go to the article and this article here is from the frontiers in nutrition it is a review in, from june 2021 uh, it's called the interplay between exercise and gut microbiome in the context of human health and performance okay so right away in the abstract they talk about how the gut microbiome and exercise has been shown to be interconnected uh, both moderate and intense exercise is typical for endurance athletes and so moderate exercise has positive effects on the health of average athletes, such as reducing inflammation, reducing intestinal permeability, that leaky gut I was just mentioning, improvement in body composition. Uh, it also induces positive changes in the gut microbiome composition, which is important because that is, again, the more diverse our microbiome is, the better it is for our gut and our health. Um, and the microbial metabolites produced in the GI tract. Those are like those neurotransmitters I just mentioned, which can affect our brain generally positively. Uh, conversely though, intense exercise, right? So intense being uh, long-term, whether it be a couple hours in a day, like, like running a half marathon or running a marathon, um, can increase gastrointestinal epithelial wall permeability. Basically it can increase leaky gut. Uh, it can diminish our gut mucus thickness. So basically, we have this mucus layer on top of our uh, cells in the gastrointestinal tract to help kind of protect it and can potentially enable pathogens to enter the bloodstream through this leaky gut, okay? Um, this in turn, again, may contribute to increased inflammatory levels. So then they say, however, elite athletes seem to have higher gut microbial diversity, um, shifted from bacterial species involved in amino acid biosynthesis and carbohydrate fiber metabolism consequently towards producing key metabolites such as short chain fatty acids. Um, and so what that means is that our, by increasing diversity of the gut microbiome through exercise, we can now use the amino acids in our proteins that we're eating 
um, to make short chain fatty acids, which is again important for the gut wall, gut lining, but also um, use carbohydrate or fiber that that is kind of that gets stuck in the in the colon, and those microbes, those bacteria, can then actually make again short chain fatty acids to improve the gut lining. Okay, um, so there's this bi-directional relationship. The microbiotic composition and its metabolic contribution to human host health could help in monitoring and modulating athletes' health and performance. Therefore, even though exercise may induce leaky gut, exercising may actually improve the diversity of a microbiome, which helps the overall gut uh, uh, bacteria, overall gut health. And so here, this first diagram shows that progressive increase in physical activity level generates changes in the intestinal microbiome. Okay. So from low physical inactivity or light activity, we have more of this, more of these pathobiont species, more pathogenic uh, species of gut microbiome, okay? And you can see there's not very many of them there. As we increase in light and moderate activity, uh, even to intense activity, we're producing more bacteria, and not only more, but more diverse bacteria. You can see there are multiple different kinds of these bacteria that are on top of this intestinal wall uh, gut lining. And so we're increasing bacterial diversity. As bacterial diversity increases, we increase short chain fatty acids. Short chain fatty acids help to repair and to feed these intestinal cells. And by doing that, we can help prevent the effects of, of moderate to high intensity exercise. Okay, And so even though moderate to high intensity exercise can diminish the gut wall um, by exercising we actually produce more bacteria that help to repair it um, and that could even play into a role why people should be taking probiotics um, at, while they are training or exercising because it can help further uh, improve the diversity and therefore uh, help when we are in maybe a higher intense training regimen if we are training for a marathon half marathon those kind of things so when looking at these physiological adaptations to endurance, um, as we are exercising, the central nervous system affects our cardiac output, affects our oxygen transport to our muscle, right? And our muscle undergoes these mitochondrial modifications. The mitochondrial modifications are things that are going to improve mitochondrial health. They are the energy or the powerhouse of the cell that makes energy. And that also affects glucose metabolism. So it affects how we uh, take glucose and energy into our cells, um, but it also maybe affects how we use ketone bodies or fat for energy as well. And then as we take energy from our diet, the energy source from our diet could be proteins, it could be fats, it could be carbohydrates, uh, but mostly proteins, amino acids, and then carbohydrate or fiber is going to feed the gut. And by feeding, or sorry, I should say, by feeding the gut microbiome. And by feeding the gut microbiome, um, that is going to, one, increase the feeding it with right foods, correct foods, and with the exercise, it increases the species diversity, right? We have increased metabolite production of these short chain fatty acids, which are going to feed these colonic epithelial cells. Here, the green is the mucus layer that helps to kind of protect the outer wall. Um, increases the intestinal barrier and it decreases inflammation, okay? And all of this in our gut, a good ecosystem um, of gut microbiome is microbiota is, are going to help with our glucose metabolism and therefore help with overall exercise performance. So um, that's, that's what I have for today. I think this is a really, really interesting article because there are a lot of evidence of why people should be exercising um, and exercising at a higher intensity. One, to sweat, um, to maybe release toxins through sweat, to um, get more of a heart rate increase, then have a lower heart rate throughout the day, but also the gut microbiome and how the gut microbiome is so essential for health. And if we can exercise to improve our gut microbiome, that in the long term is not going to include or improve our performance, but also improve our overall health. So if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. If you have any suggestions for future topics, I would love to hear them. Thanks again and have a great day. Stay healthy.